Good morning. Welcome to worship. I invite you to stand as you're able to turn and face the cross. We begin with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ in seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen.
may be seated. Welcome once more to worship. Thank you for gathering this day in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining us at home for worship as well. If you're a guest with us, welcome. All are invited to the communion table. You'll receive a wafer in your hands, and then you can pick up one of the cups. There's red wine and white grape juice. We also have gluten-free. Let us know if you need that. All are welcome. A couple of announcements for this week ahead. Today is our first day of Sunday school. Woo! Yay! So students and parents head downstairs with teachers after class today. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask them, get to know. If you have yet to sign up, you can do that too. Uh, thir- three years old through sixth grade. So please join us downstairs for Sunday school. Uh, and then the invitation, if you're interested for food or fellowship, Texas Roadhouse and Crystal Lake, bring your service folder today or any Sunday, and they donate back to the congregation. So an opportunity if you are interested. Tuesday morning is Sewing Circle, Wednesday afternoon, Pinochle. Thursday is a Wacom Woodstock Area Community Ministries fundraiser at the Moose for Burger Night. Next Sunday then, following worship at 1015, here in the sanctuary or on Zoom is our congregational meeting. The report has been sent out. There's a couple copies on the information desk, and we invite you to be a part of this part of our congregational's life and uh, hear updates in Synod Assembly and gather for elections for leadership positions next Sunday. Then one of my favorite days of the year is coming. I hope you've all saved September 8th for the ELCA service day where we gather for service. So a number of sites are already posted and a couple more are coming. Uh, If you'd like a shirt, there are the awesome yellow shirts on the table. We'd love for you to sign up so that our team leaders can prepare. Uh, There's a group going to Ark Gardens in Hebron. That's where our VBS offerings went to support that ministry. We have a group going to the Woodstock Food Pantry. We have Sewing Circle on site the assembly of the Lutheran World Relief School Kits also here, and then a couple more are being finalized. So save that date, make plans to serve on September 8th, and then next week is the due date for the school kit items. They have been coming in each week, and we'd love for a final push on those school kit items. Uh, You can see the sign up for specifics. There are still spots for pens, erasers, spiral notebooks, pencil sharpeners, scissors and rulers, preparing 120 school kits. So thank you for your support for this part of God's work, our hands. Thanks for gathering. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Ever-loving God, Your Son gives himself as living bread for the life of the world. Fill us with such a knowledge of his presence that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life to serve you continually. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. At this time, it's a joy to invite forward Tyler Pallack, our Director of Youth Education, and all of our Sunday School teachers and substitute teachers. Come on up. Thank you. Good morning. (laughs) We have a few people missing today, so, oh, that is wonderful. Uh, (laughs) um, So I would like to acknowledge both our teachers who are present now and who are absent at this this moment uh, before we begin our commissioning and blessing. So Sydney Meyer, um, Lisa Wokosiak, Kim Lanham, Brent Folletti, Andy Bellavia, Mark Miller, John Bergstrom, Nick Weedoff, Jimmy Lynn Weedoff, Leslie Burns, and Nan Burns. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of service, or services, but the same Lord, and there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. 
Brothers and sisters, you have answered the call to give your time, your energy, and your gifts to the children, youth, and family ministries of this congregation. Will you offer your gifts to the ministry in confidence that it comes from God? If so, please respond, I will, and I ask God to help me. A reading from Ephesians. I pray that you may be strengthened in your inner being with the power through God's spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Will you trust in God's care, seek to grow in love for those you serve, strive for excellence in your skills, and honor the gospel with a faithful life, if so, please respond, I will, and I ask God to help me. I invite the congregation to stand as able. I now ask you, people of Grace Lutheran Church, will you today renew your commitment to our youngest siblings in Christ, our children and youth who look to you for guidance, support, and examples of righteous living? If so, please respond, we will, and we ask God to help us. Yes. Teachers, you can face the assembly. People of Grace Lutheran Church, will you claim these gifted people as those called by God to help carry out our congregation's ministry to children, youth, and families? Will you support them and enthusiastically celebrate the work they do? If so, please respond, we will and we ask God to help us. Let us pray. Gracious God, for Jesus' sake, empower these ministers to care for the young ones in our family of faith. Help them to teach faithfully, lead patiently, and guide confidently. Stir up in these servants the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Teachers, may Almighty God, who has given you these gifts and the will to do these things, graciously give you the strength and the compassion to perform them. Amen. On behalf of Grace Lutheran Church, thank you. First reading this morning is from Proverbs. Wisdom has built her house. She has honed her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals, she has mixed her wine, and she has also set her table. She has sent out her servant girls. She calls from the highest places in the town. You that are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. Word of God, word of life. We will read Psalm 34, verses 9 through 14, responsibly. Fear the Lord, you saints of the Lord. For those who fear the Lord lack nothing. Come, children, and listen to me. I will teach you reverence for the Lord. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from lying words. Our second reading is from Ephesians. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. 
So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Word of God, word of life. Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true blood, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. You may be seated. All right, if young people will come up, please. All right. How are you guys doing? Good. All right. So Pastor Amanda just read Jesus talking about communion. You guys know what communion is? Mm -hmm. All right. So tell me what's communion right there so everybody can hear what's communion blood of Christ and the food. Exactly. It's when we come up here, right, and we have the bread and the wine or the juice. Now, I want to tell you a communion story, okay? So imagine you're living 2,000 years ago, okay? You had just seen Jesus killed on the cross. But then two days later on Sunday, you hear stories that when people went to where Jesus was put in the cave, it was empty and he was gone. And there were two of those people, they heard those stories, but then they went back to their hometown. They're walking on the road to their hometown. And all of a sudden, a third person appears and kind of walks up alongside them. What are you guys talking about? And they explain, well, we, we saw Jesus killed on the cross and then uh, just this morning everybody said that he had risen from the dead, and it's unbelievable. We can't believe it. And that the third person starts explaining from the Bible why this is really true. Well, they're just having this conversation. They get to the town where they're going, and they tell the third person, don't keep walking. It's getting dark. Stay with us tonight. Eat a meal with us. Rest. And then you can go on the next day. So that person agrees, and they sit down, and there's bread on the table, and the person who joined them takes the bread, says a blessing, breaks the bread and passes it out, and all of a sudden they realize it's Jesus. And just at that moment, 
poof, Jesus disappears. They ran back, very excited to tell everybody what happened. Now I have another question for you, and that is, all right, when exactly when did they realize that it was Jesus who was with them? When was it? Just where in that story did they realize, hey, that was Jesus? When Jesus did what? When he broke the bread and blessed it and passed it out, right? So we learn from that story that when we come up here and we have the bread and we have the wine or the juice, that Jesus is with us. He's with us when we do that. Just like Jesus was with them and they realized it when he broke the bread and blessed it, we know that Jesus is with us when we come up here, the bread is given and the wine is, or the juice is taken. So that's a very cool thing to know that Jesus is with us when we do that. So you guys who are old enough to do it, even you guys who just come up for a blessing, right? Remember, it's a special time to remember that Jesus is with us. Let's say a prayer. Dear Lord, we know you are with us throughout our life, but especially when we come up here and we receive communion, when we receive the bread and the wine, just like those two people in the story we just talked about. And that's a wonderful thing to know. Amen. Thank you all for coming up. So I have this new hole in my life that I am struggling to adjust to, and that is the end of the Olympics. I don't normally watch much TV at all, but I was glued to the incredible storytelling of the opening ceremony and found such joy in seeing the athletes at the closing ceremony. And then in between the two, there were so many beautiful moments, surprises, really close events, disappointments celebrations, and so much goodness. I have this one image that'll stay in my mind of Rebecca Andrade, the Brazilian gymnast, who took the podium to receive gold for her floor routine, and on both sides, Simone Biles and Jordan Childs, silver and bronze medalists bow down in respect, honor, appreciation for their competitor, sportsmanship, lifting her up in this moment of celebration for her accomplishment. I think of this one U.S. Uh, relay team I saw in a qualifying race where a newer, younger runner struggled, and yet their team rallied and carried them on to that next round. And even after the race, they supported and encouraged this one athlete who rose up to a brand new level of competition and experience and was encouraged for the role they played on the team. I miss all these moments, these glimpses into people's shared humanity, kindness, even in one of the most competitive of spaces. Sometimes when I notice people getting on each other's nerves or displaying profound skills at pushing other people's buttons just to get a reaction out of them, I want to say to them what I say to our kids, could you please help each other to be their best selves? Help each other. Practice kindness. For we are all far too skilled and capable of tearing each other down, but we can also do really well to build one another up. It's my hope that you know some of those experiences. Even if you've never stepped foot on an Olympic stage or competition, but to know what it's like for someone to buoy your spirits to see you and encourage you, brighten your day with even the simplest act of kindness. It is such a gift that we are able to lift one another up, 
without expecting something in return, without holding it over them in some unhealthy way, but to celebrate, encourage, help each other to be our best selves. There are so many references of a few different kinds of lifting up throughout Scripture. From the Psalms, for example, we hear cries to lift up your heads, or to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. From Isaiah, there's a lifting of every voice to sing, or a call to mount up like on the wings of eagles. Words that call us to lift our eyes, our hearts, our hands. There's a remembering of Moses lifting up the serpent in the wilderness as a way of foretelling how Jesus would be lifted up on a cross and in resurrection. And then there's all these stories of Jesus healing that tell of people being lifted up, restored from illness or from isolation or even from death lifted up to newness of life. It translates then to our prayers and songs. Think of some of those familiar Holden songs where we lift up our hearts as an offering to God, or our communion liturgy where we lift up our hearts to the Lord. And today we hear Jesus who is still talking about how he is the bread of life, the good stuff, as we heard Bishop last week, how Jesus is the living bread, the real deal. And now Jesus tells the people that he gives his flesh and blood for people to eat and drink, and in this, Jesus will raise them up on the last day. This word to raise up shows up elsewhere in the New Testament as stand up, get up, and to rise from the dead. Jesus tells us that his gift of himself, lifted high on the cross, raised from the dead, for we proclaim he is risen indeed, Jesus' gift of his very flesh and blood will raise you up on the last day, we hear, and now, too. For Jesus is telling that he gives his whole self to us, for us, he doesn't offer anything less than all that he has for us. There is nothing that stands in his place or replaces him. It is this incredible gift from Jesus that lifts us up over and over and again and forever. Because this bread of life that is Jesus is different, different from the bread that their ancestors shared. This living bread from heaven grants eternal life. Now, if you find some discomfort in these words, that's okay. Hang in there with this idea of eating flesh and drinking blood just a bit to cling to all that Jesus is revealing. For this is a part of the promise that we rejoice in at Christmas. It's the gift of incarnation. That Jesus was born a human child, of skin and bones and flesh and blood in order to live and walk among us, among God's people. That's the story we hear about in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and the Word became flesh and lived among us. Jesus' incarnation is not just for Christmas, but it's this continuing importance for us, an ongoing promise that Jesus continues to be really present with us, in the flesh, among us, and for us. And then if you hang in this with these words just a bit longer, you hear how in the eating and in the drinking there's a uniting with. It's a dwelling, a mixing a remaining with, a remaining with Jesus by abiding. Abiding in Jesus and Jesus abiding in all. Jesus' teaching tells the story of being deeply and forever connected to Christ. 
And this is the good news that we trust lifts us up on the last day. The living bread that is eternal life. And it's the good news that lifts us up today and every day in the waiting. Because of Jesus' all-in generosity in giving life to us and for us and for all the world, how can we be anything other than lifted up by this promise? Lifted up by Jesus, his real presence, his resurrection promise, they are a gift to lift our spirits, to accompany you in all things, because abiding in Christ has no limit or end. God is with you. And as Jesus lifts you up, Jesus also unites each of us into one through this one body of Christ. We are reminded in this that people near and far are drawn together by Christ. Just in the story we've heard of this wondrous feeding of thousands of people, there's enough to share. There's enough of Jesus lifting people up to share. Because when Jesus lifts people up, no one is trampled down. No one is pressed out of the way. Somehow, Jesus can lift us up in a way that's not exclusive or competitive. Somehow, the raising up through the flesh and blood that is given and shared by Jesus lifts people together to know what it is to be restored, to be made well, to be nourished and fed. Now, in the Gospel of John, we don't hear the, the words of institution or the Last Supper story we hear in the other Gospels, but we've heard these words enough to know and to remember how Jesus gives his very self. For in the sacrament of Holy Communion that we do share, Jesus' mercy, grace, and love are proclaimed even as we wait until the fullness of God's kingdom has come. For the body of Christ is given for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. And this meal continues to lift us up again and again. I pray that these gifts of God equip you to care for each other, to lift someone else up, to show up in people's times of need, and may this gift of God keep nourishing you with the goodness of God that endures and abides forever. Amen.
Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, found in the front section of the hymnal on page 105. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Calling on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and our minds, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Wisdom has built her house. May the church be a house of wisdom for all who enter. May we continue to grow and stretch in ways we had never thought possible. Merciful God, wisdom has mixed her wine. Let the harvest seasons be plentiful this year. We pray for orchards, vineyards, farms, and all of creation. Protect and conserve the earth. Merciful God, Wisdom has employed her laborers. Be with all who seek adequate employment. Guide our economic and governmental leaders to support the people of our world with fair wages and safe working conditions. Merciful God. Wisdom has invited her guest. Make your presence known to all who feel lost, abandoned, or hurting at this time. Direct your spirit of care to all who seek healing and comfort, especially those we now name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Merciful God, wisdom has set her table. May this congregation be a welcome table to all who seek the refuge of God. Break down walls and barriers that prevent us from offering a seat at this table to anyone who comes. Merciful God. Wisdom has shown her path of insight. May we journey on her path, looking toward a bright future while remembering from where we have come. We give our thanks to those who have gone before us. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. We lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Amen. We share a sign of Christ's peace. We give thanks for your generosity in giving. Uh, for part of the, the expenses of ministry is a curriculum. So we have materials provided for Sunday school, for our confirmation lessons. And for that part of the whole, today we give thanks. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Thank you. 
God, our maker, redeemer, and healer, and the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars, were whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your Son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, 
gave thanks and gave it for all to share, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up, and his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us in this meal. As grain scattered on the hillside become one bread, so let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth, that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, and your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and give us our sins, as we forgive the sins of sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, deliver us from the evil. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come to the table. All are welcome.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. The blessing of God, who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, you are the body of Christ.